It's Tom and Slenderman Ross Twedell over here. Slenderman? Everybody's saying how lovely and smelty oh, you're wow. looking. Oh, well, yeah, there was a long way, we had a high starting point. <laughs> yeah, it's getting there though, Tom. What's the secret? Uh, walking and not eating like a tosser. <laughs> You're about to consume some news, though. I <laughs> see. <laughs> Bloody <laughs> good food. <laughs> Two big independent stars have officially signed with the WWE. We have an update on Andrade's wellness policy violation and an update on plans for a WWE star after their Raw debut. We'll get to that very soon. It's a lovely slinky move you're doing oh, now. Right? I'm on the Saturn sheet. <laughs> oh, Hello, I'm Ryan Saturn on oh. my Saturn sheet. So what did what did Ryan Saturn talk about on he his He talked Saturn about sheet? how he got two independent stars into bed. He didn't actually. <laughs> he spoke about how Timothy Thatcher and Killer Cross are now officially signed with the WWE. Well, the Timothy Thatcher one was a rumour and innuendoed until yesterday afternoon where it was almost 100% guaranteed and then... Sealed, yeah, sealed with a kiss by Satin last night. <laughs> sealed with a killer cross. Killer kiss. Sealed with a cross. Yeah, it was PW Insider and Squared Circle Sirens were both saying that uh, Timothy Thatcher was at the Performance Centre yesterday, but he started working with WWE earlier this week. Oh. And so uh, now him and Killer Cross both confirmed. So if both of these names are a little bit unknown to you, uh, let's talk a bit about them. Timothy Thatcher, a beast of a man. Not related to Margaret. Not related to Margaret, because the last thing we want to do is talk about Thatcher in the northeast of England. <laughs> uh, but a, a beast of a man who has an incredible wrestling history, longest reigning Evolve champion. I was, well, right, I was on WWE.com last night and I just thought, Timmy Thatcher, put him in there, see what comes up. There was an article from 2015, five evolved stars we should keep an eye on, and Thatcher is in there. Wowzers. 2015. A uh, long time ago, that Tom. Very, to very long off. time. No, very long time ago. Uh, he's wrestled all over the world. They made a comment uh, on backstage that uh, we, I mentioned to you just before he came down, made me a little bit sick in my mouth <laughs> when they said, an original member of Imperium. You'd find that was Ring Camp. <laughs> which is not Imperium. <laughs> I mean, they did come out to do, 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 yeah. as they want to do. But yeah, it's, so they, there's history with him and Volta. In fact, Volta actually went on to social media and put a nice picture of him and Timo hanging out. Do you reckon he cleared that with the powers that be before he did that? Does Volta need to do that? Because oh, that's all yeah. you do, Triple H. I going to say. Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Are you going to tell Johnny him Johnny Saint? Do? <laughs> oh, no. Don't go to Johnny Saint. Jeez, better get a word in as it is. Um, but yeah, so he's he's uh, he's got history with Volta. So which which leads to speculation, Ross. I'd like your thought on this. Are we going to see uh, Timo in NXT UK? You would say that is the most logical place. As we're sat here right now, will Volta putting that out with the history they have? Why the hell not put him in there to start with? And then who knows, bring Imperium over like they have done a few times now for NXT Yellow and Gold. Mm. Gold and black, my god, colours are <laughs> hard. Uh, and then we've got Killer Cross, uh, independent star, wrestled all over the world as well, but got his big break uh, a, a few years back when he was the mystery attacker. It was backstage. amazing when he rocked up in his little his little uniform thing and it was uh, mm. Petey Williams he attacked, wasn't it, backstage? Oh, the reveal! Oh! <laughs> it was good, wasn't it? Because <laughs> then you watch back all of them and it's like, oh, he's, back, he's behind the scenes in all of them. Yeah. Dressed as a policeman oh, sometimes. Like an intricate thread. He was he genuinely felt like he was going to be a big thing in Impact. Like they they gave him like a lot of high profile batterings. Yeah. And then it just kind of went quiet. Yeah. Like they like the relationship between him and Impact soured to the point where he just sat out the last months of his contract. I mean, you look at him and it's just it just it is WWE. He's 101. He's their guy, oh. and he's massive. He's shredded. He's got a few tattoos. Scarlet Bordeaux's there as well. Link them up together. Oh, Why the hell not? Yes. They work, don't they? They they're, work together. Well, they're a real life couple. They are. They're a beautiful real life couple. So it's nice that they're there. So there was rumours for several weeks that Killer Cross had been an ad. I'm presuming. No, there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we never even had a Nando's together, mate. I presume they went out and had it. What do you reckon they went for a Nando's? Triple H likes a Nando's. I uh. think he does. I think. Well, we know Undertaker does. We yeah. reported this in great detail a while in back. Scotland. Yeah, that's the, that's one of the most random things professional wrestling history series. That Undertaker having a Nando's yeah. on his own in Scotland, I love it. But um, but I so there was rumours they would met and then Killer Cross shot them all down. They clearly had. Never they're... trust a professional wrestler. We had <laughs> Dustin Rhodes, <laughs> then Joe Mo, and now Killer Cross. They're all liars. What do you reckon for Killer Cross? In NXT, surely the American. Put one. him and Scarlett together. It worked elsewhere. Why couldn't it work in NXT? 
Top and top of NXT? Yeah. Straight up? Yeah, fast track him? Well, not straight up. Well, there was, there, there, was, there, there was talk that he was going to be fast tracked to NXT. Like, Why not? He is uh, bloody good, though, isn't he? He is very, very Just good. Just let him knock folks' head off. Ooh. That's what I, I, like, I like people who do that, me. Just. Just <laughs> <laughs> Update on Andrade now, who is currently in the middle of a 30 day holiday as no, a result. No, he's not. Is he's he in not? the hospital. Oh, he's... He got DDT'd on the floor. Of course he is. Of course he is. <laughs> He's in the holiday spittle. Uh, after a wellness violation, uh, he's off TV for 30 days. And um, interesting discussion about this uh, yesterday on Facebook, in particular, uh, Hugo Savanovich. Savinovich. Savinovich's Facebook page. Now, last time we heard from Hugo Savinovich, it was just around the time that the crown jewel Saudi Arabia thing was happening. And he had a lot of things to say from people on the inside about what was going on. So a lot of what he said turned out to be true. <laughs> and so therefore, we all want to believe there is something to be said for this. So uh, on his Facebook video chat that he did the other night, uh, Hugo Savanovich uh, compared Andrade's wellness policy violation situation to Primo's. Oh, Supremo so famously couldn't get to where they were doing the wellness policy test and that, so they suspended him. Well, yeah, basically, it's kind of what happened. From what they had we... to pay for his own <clears> flight <throat> or something like that, so he couldn't get there. Yeah, so Hugo, according to Hugo, Primo had to pay for his own flight uh, to, to fly out uh, to the Amer to the America where to, to the part of America, not the, the, the America, America. <laughs> to the to the place where they were doing the the testing. But and Primo said, "Well, look, I can't and I won't." Uh, so how about I go to this centre in Puerto Rico instead and do my test there? The next thing he heard was he'd been suspended. So they think that, and, and so Hugo Savinovich is making uh, a, a comparison between the Primo situation and the Andrade one. It's hardly a shock because if you follow Andrade and or Charlotte Flair on Instagram, they go on holidays endlessly. Mm -hmm. So probably they're on holiday somewhere. Let's just say it. Let's just put it out there now. <laughs> Officially, they were on holiday and Andrade could not be asked to come home from his holiday for a wellness policy test. Well, yeah, that's they, what happened. That's, that was it because they were away sort of end of December when the rumour was there was another wellness policy. Test and so they might have said, Hey, Andrew, get away, come back. I've paid for this all inclusive. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> They're currently in Benidorm <laughs> drinking free drinks, watching the little uh, entertainment. <laughs> hey, Charlotte, they want us to go back. Hey, up there, Andrew. Hey, Manny, Manny, you're not <laughs> going back there. Don't. We're gonna have a pie to Stella <laughs> and sit down next to the pool. We don't get refunds on this if we go early, do we? We've got, we've got a flight all booked, it's not gonna pay extra. <laughs> Teletext holiday. Andrade and Charlotte book Teletext holidays. There's the other scoop. Uh, so that's possibly, that's, that's some speculation there uh, from, from a very uh, well-known source. He was there for God knows how long. Him and uh, Carlos Cabrera were the, the, the Spanish duo on commentary when, when I was a kid, when you were a kid as well. Yeah, well, that was it. I was, I was not watching wrestling when they debuted, but I know they debuted in 1994. Yes, because I was, uh, on this week's Raw, there was a sign in honor of Carlos Cabrera, and I made a WTF moment I've never seen one before. Oh. I googled it. It was 1994 when Carlos. He's still going. We do a uh, we do a podcast uh, for Cultaholic where we watch we're watching every episode of Raw. Myself and uh, one of our writers, Justin Henry, and uh, just recently we watched the episode where Carlos Cabrera debuted, <laughs> where they reveal for the first what, time ever big, Spanish announcers. He got a big. Yeah, they said let's welcome our first time ever our Spanish announce team, and there was Carlos Cabrera, the longest running episodic announcer <laughs> in the history of professional wrestling. What a boy! Oh, Carlos. Oh, Carlos. Carlos. Yeah. And, and, and there's some Andrade news as well. AEW Dynamite TE tonight. We may not see on Dynamite the Nightmare Collective. <laughs> I thought you'd have an opinion on this. <sighs> <laughs> but I can't believe, because I made it a WTF moment on the AEWTF moments last week. I can't believe this what happened, what we're talking about now, on Dark. Yeah. It seems way too big to be happening on the YouTube show. This should have been front and centre, the big angle of the night on last week's or this week's Dynamite. Speak about it. So last, so last night on Dark, Mel lost a match and afterwards we saw Awesome Kong and Mel uh, start a bit of a shoving contest. This leads to Dr. Luther grabbing Awesome Kong and letting Mel get some shots in. Then we see Kong get thrown into the, into the guardrail, onto the steps, guillotine leg dropped off the steps, just gets battered. And there was, and she was carried to the back and, and there was 
speculation on AEW's Twitter and social media platforms that this might be the end of, of Awesome Kong's career. Uh, this could be the end of the Nightmare Collective. Uh, there is some, high, some rampant speculation that this is how they're going to write off, arguably, the most critically panned storyline in AEW currently. Do you like it? I just Mr. Positivity over here, if you don't like it, there's something <laughs> wrong. There's, I think because it's so similar to so many other groups, there was one episode of AEW recently, which I think you mentioned this in, in the moments, where it was the whole thing was three evil factions Absolutely. inviting other yeah. people to join them. Like that was your whole show. Like it's it's, there's a, the, I think it's a, it's a weaker version of the Dark Order. Yes, absolutely. So like you don't need two Dark and the, Orders. The, the, the basis of it is Brandy. And we knew Brandy before mm. this all started and she's a lovely person. I know they did the bank to the head angle and that's what set her off onto this, this, this whatever it is. This thing. Yeah. But it doesn't quite work, does it? But thankfully they're turning what is chicken poo in my opinion into some sort of chicken salad or soup. Because they're doing these things on social media where Brandy's got to therapy, but yeah. she's, she's getting interviewed by the therapist, but the therapist isn't real. It's a little cuddly toy monkey, I believe, or something mm. like that. And it's sort of like she's questioning whether she's doing the right thing, and hopefully that leads to her realizing, oh, this nightmare collective thing, it's a load of ballots. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say that. It's a load of rubbish, this just, is. The, the final one ends with just a light bulb going off over her head. Ah! It's a load of ballocks. And then she walks us off and then she's back with Cody and the Nightmare family are together again with Arn Anderson being their father. The one thing I liked, uh, Daddy Arn, <laughs> the one thing I liked about the Nightmare Collective was Awesome Kong collecting hair. Yeah, that was I like that, that when was she, fun. When she whacked out that knife, yeah. I think it was on the Full Gear pre-show maybe, I can't remember, someone correct me down below. When she whacked that out, it was so different and unexpected and shocking. I was all on board. Yeah, but then I was you, in for that. She, she got everybody. She hasn't got everybody, has she? No. Who does she need? Who, who's, Sammy you, Guevara. If you could steal somebody's hair from AW, who would it be? Oh, great question. Um, oh, oh, gosh, 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 gosh. Can I have? Um, I want Austin Idol's hair because <laughs> he's on tonight. <laughs> But Arsen Idol's hair from, from the 80s. <laughs> it's still the same, what you're on about? Pretty much. <laughs> whose, whose hair would you steal? Big Swole. Oh, Give me mate. Big Swole. Oh, just, it's, just, it's so versatile and can be used as a weapon. Oh, that's a great shout. Weapon folk with that. Oh, it's a bit, bit, bit Bianca Belairish, I guess, but you know. That'd it's be, a lovely do. I like that. I'd love to go, go to the Benidorm and get that done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll see Andrade <laughs> and Charlotte <laughs> by the pool on an all inclusive. Vince wants us back! <laughs> State of it. And before we say Tope Kong goodbye, you stole mine, I'm stealing yours. An update on plans. <laughs> <laughs> you leave Barry out of this. <laughs> I'm naked. Um, update from uh, Dave Meltzer regarding Angel Gaza, who made a debut on Raw this past week. I'm excited for Gaza. So on Raw. impressive. The main thing I took away from that watching him next to Humberto is that Angel Gaza has so much more than Humberto. <laughs> <laughs> what I took away from it is Gaza is better. Yeah, Gaza is just a lot better than Humberto. He's in my got opinion, a anyway. smile that... He's just got that charisma. Oh, yeah. As Chris Jarrett... Sorry, not Clint Bobsky used to speak about in South Pole Regional Wrestling. <laughs> charisma, kid. He's just, he's just wonderful, isn't he? He's got a lot of Handsome, charisma. Handsome, the tearaway, tearaway tight. He's got everything. Well, enjoy my Monday nights, because it might not be for long. Uh, this comes from Dave Meltzer, who says, For now, Gaza is here on Raw because Andrade failed a drug test and they needed something. That's what he's here for. I know he should stay, and he may, and there's no rule that he has to go back to NXT. But right now, the idea is he's still going to be on both shows, but he's an NXT guy and he's a fill in for 30 days. Once again, they've taken, sorry, just to compare it to Brandy making chicken soup or salad out of chicken poo. Mm -hmm. WWE have been handed this thing where Andrade's got it suspended. One of the main angles on Raw, I guess, was his United States Championship reign and the battles against Ray and Humberto and people like that. And they thought, hey, his cousin's down there, Humberto. Let's yeah. bring him in and let's keep Zelina Vega on TV. It all links together. There's a family tie in there. It's relatable stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, I liked it. I think the only thing they missed in terms of family ties is Zelina Vega could have brought in her, her long lost cousin, Savio. <laughs> Get out of there, Savio. <laughs> Defend my honor. <laughs> I'm calling for a Savio return. Why the hell not? He's still good, isn't he? He is. You he often was... see his name touted about for independent shows, don't you? He was in Major League Wrestling a while ago with yeah, the old Savio. Still got it. Bring him back with a hey, bull, the it... bull thing. Yeah. The, 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 what's he called? Him and Austin had that match. Mantle. Was it the, the strap oh. match? <laughs> <laughs> oh. no, the, lights, yeah. the lights went off. They had that match with the thing. <laughs> lights out match. <laughs> you know the one we yeah. mean. Have a great old Wednesday. We should know as well. Melty was speculating that Rey Mysterio, because he got DDT'd on the floor, is due for a break now from the WWE. Oh. That is just speculation. Okay. Or maybe he failed a wellness policy thing as well, because apparently 
you have to get DDT'd on the floor if you fail one of those. If you get DDT'd on the floor, that means that you get 30 days off. <laughs> That's how it works. Maybe try it in your office today. Come on, just do it to me and then I'll have a month off. There you go, mate. Come on. Right. No! Oh, there you go. I'm dead. Enjoy your February. <laughs> me back. And enjoy your Wednesday. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.